Get this started. I've got an echo. Hey everyone, this is John Park. Welcome to John Park's workshop for the last day of May. Here we are. Uh, just going to set a level here. Thanks for tuning in. We have a pretty cool show in store for you today. By we, I mean me. Uh, and uh, what better way to start that off than with a little bit of free money. So, let's take a look at the coupon code for the week. It is automaton. Never an easy word to say, but a pretty cool topic, and that's what we're going to be exploring today. If you hadn't noticed my uh, little banner at the bottom that tells you the topic of the day, it's usually somehow related to the coupon code. You might even be able to guess it. Uh, so automaton, that'll get you 10% off in the Adafruit store on all items except for gift certificates, software subscriptions, and software and subscriptions. Those are the three things. Uh, and so put that in your, put all the stuff you want in your cart, and then on checkout, type in automaton, A-U-T-O-M-A-T-O-N, and you'll get 10% off, and that's good until midnight tonight, my time. Eastern time? I'm not quite sure. Uh, time zones. All right. Uh, so, let's see. We've got um, Cardboard Mania and Robot uh, Rage. I don't know what to, what'll, Cardboard Mania and Robot Frenzy. There you go. Uh, rolling here at Adafruit Industries, including here in Adafruit Industries West. Uh, so, this continues today. We're going to be looking at some cricket based. Where's my cricket? We're going to be looking at some cricket based projects. Uh, one in particular. A little robot controller, the cricket there with a Circuit Playground Express on it. And the product of the week is this little guy. This is this really cool orange wheel uh, with a rubber clear tire on it which I haven't even used it for like a robot cart yet, although I have some plans. Uh, cardboard Mayhem, that's right. Uh, so I have some plans for, for a wheeled robot coming up, but we're going to use it today for something else. But anyway, you dice it. This is a pretty cool wheel. It's, it's nice and big. It's stable. Um, 
It's got some pretty nice grip to it. It's inexpensive. It's $1.50 on the Adafruit store. I think we're sold out right now. We're out of stock, but you can uh, sign up and it'll let you know when they're back in stock. Uh, you can see the little rubber tire comes off. Wheelie cool, Andon. I'm on a roll. Funny guys. Uh, yeah, it does look like a creamsicle. So I've uh, experimented a little bit with using this as a pulley. It would kind of need a groove in it for certain types of things or, or to, um, I tried flipping this inside out. But anyway, I think you can, you can use it for some interesting things. This gives it kind of like a little channel for a belt. Uh, but if you want to use it the way it was intended, it is like so, and it fits onto the shaft of the TT motor. So we call it the TT motor wheel. Uh, TT motor is this little guy right here. Nice little uh, inexpensive DC gearbox motor with uh, a 1 to 90 ratio. Oh, I got that wheel all on wonky or the tire on wonky. Uh, so that's what we're going to use today for our project. So that's pro product of the week. And if you go to adafru.it slash 3766, you can check it out or adafruit.com slash product slash 3766. I think I got the number in there, right? Did I? Yeah, 3766. So check that out. Um, let's see. I will jump around a little bit today um, before we get to the make code minute, which ties into the product project uh, of the week. I want to jump forward a little bit into a uh, part of the topic for this automaton we're going to build is cams and followers. So um, let's head over to the workbench and, oh, let's clear that. Is my audio still working? Yay! Uh, and let's take a look at some gigantic cams I just made. So there we have a wheel on a shaft or an axle. It's just a circle with a hole poked through it. Um, and if we rest something on top of this, uh, let's say this, I've got this tube here, and turn the wheel, uh, let's ignore the friction that we have here. I'll get that out of my face. Uh, and what you'll see is that the rotation wouldn't really do much of anything to the position of this. Uh, it might, if we have a lot of friction, try to move it around. But if this is uh, in a, uh, a bearing sleeve, let's say, so it can only move up and down, a wheel won't do much. If we offset the wheel, and this is kind of an extreme example, uh, it becomes a type of cam, and our shaft here uh, is a type of cam follower. So you can see now, if I leave this still in space and rotate around the pencil, we're going to go up and down. If we follow the edge of our cam. And you can make cams with different shapes to uh, create different types of motion. So here's a triangle. I've got a little bit of a uh, arc to it. Looks kind of like a, all the Mazda RX-7 people will recognize this as your symbol for your Winkle rotary engine. Uh, so again, we're gonna see that the follower will rise up and down and stay down for a little while, up and down and stay down for a while with a, with a triangle. So that gives you a kind of sharp motion with a, with a pause at the bottom. Um, and depending on the type of uh, shape, you can do interesting things. This is a snail type follower. So this will have uh, quite a, rise and then a sudden drop and then it'll stay at that position and then this sort of nautilus shape will start to bring it up and then it'll rise suddenly sudden drop um, so you can think of this in terms of um, the ease in and ease out of motion which is uh, sort of a way of looking at it in animation terms but if you uh, consider uh, a curve of up and down which is y uh, over time you get different um, types of motion. If we use this uh, circle, we get kind of a nice sine wave type of a shape. If we use our triangle, we'll get sudden peaks and drops, like a sawtooth almost. Uh, our nautilus will have an, an ease up and then a sharp drop down, kind of like a, um, actually I should say this is like a triangle and this is like a saw 
uh, sawtooth with a sudden drop. So um, these cams are used all over the place in mechanisms that need to convert a rotation into a linear motion. And we've done that uh, with some other projects, including our garage door opener um, and just a, a crank and slider. Uh, but this is a pretty cool one for use, particularly, you'll see them a lot in engines, but we're going to use it for a type of uh, automata, a simple automaton, uh, which will just convert our crank's rotation into an up and down motion, and then we can decide what type of cam to use to uh, influence the style of motion that we get, or the period that it stays still, how quickly it rises, how quickly it drops. Um, so the project we're going to do, rather than have these cranks turned uh, or these shafts turned by hand with a crank, we're going to end up using, you guessed it, our uh, Cricut and a TT motor with this wheel. And I've got a couple of different uh, ways I'd like to show you uh, of how you can turn that shaft using this wheel, um, particularly involving gearing things down because these move pretty fast, so we want to slow the motion down. I've got a couple ideas on that. Um, and in order to do all that, we're going to go over to my workstation and take a look at setting up a make code sketch or program to drive the motor uh, at different speeds and uh, for different amounts of time when we uh, introduce some variants in, uh, of blocking of the light on the light sensor as well as the switch and the couple of buttons. So we've got a few different ways that we can set this up to drive the motor on the Cricut. So let's head back over there. And let's bring up Make Code Minute. So I've got my uh, handy green screened Make Code right here. And it's right in my face, so I'm going to ask some parts of it to move out of the way. Uh, and what I'm going to do, like I like to do with these Make Code Minutes, is break down the problem and a couple of the blocks that we can use to uh, solve the problem, and then we'll upload it to the board and uh, take a look. So the uh, first thing I'll say is that we're going to put out some instructions on how to use Make Code with Cricut. I'm not going to go over that part of it today because it'll uh, take a little bit of time and this is brand new. Um, but Suffice it to say, the exciting thing is that we now have within Make Code this uh, item over here, which is the Cricut category. And if I click on the Cricut category, I haven't even looked through all this yet, it's that new. Uh, but right at the top, we see Cricut Run Motor. Uh, so if I bring in a Cricut Run Motor block, and I'll put that right on my forehead so you can see it. Uh, the Cricut Run Motor block, let's um, set this up to work with a button. So I'll bring in a button A click. This comes from the input category here. I already have one. And I'll drop my Cricut Run Motor 1. Uh, and you can see we have drop down for the two different motors. Uh, if you recall, on where did I put the Cricut? There it is. On the Cricut, we have uh, a bunch of different outputs. And on this little terminal block row, we have uh, the sort of positive and negative sides of a DC motor 1 and a DC motor 2, as well as a ground there for doing more sophisticated types of stepper motors, but we don't need that for this. So uh, I can pick one of those two motors here. I've got Cricut motor 1, and it's going to run at 50% power. So that's the equivalent of the throttle um, command inside of CircuitPython, if you've, if you've tried that already. Um, so right now, if I press the button, it would run at 50% speed. And I can bring in another of these button blocks and choose on button B, uh, let's stop the motor. So under my Cricut, Cricut stop motor one, come here. Get that off my face, uh, sort of off my face, there we go. So right now if I press the button B, it'll stop that motor. Um, so that's what we start with. Now I'm gonna delete and put this one back where it was. Where was it? On button. Oh, I already had one in here, didn't I? So I'm going to delete that Cricut block and put back in here a variation on this Cricut Run Motor 1. Instead of saying at a, and then telling it an explicit speed, what I'm going to do is set the, uh, I created a variable called speed under this variables category, 
And at the beginning, uh, when I start the program, I start it up at 40% speed. And then I have a couple of inputs for the switch on the Circuit Playground Express. When I move the switch to the left, it'll set the speed to 40. When I move this switch to the right, it'll set the speed variable to 70. And so now you can see when I press button A, it uses whatever that variable is set to right now. Um, and I might play around with using uh, the light sensor for this later. I just uh, didn't have time to set that up, but I think for the guide, I'll set it up so that we can control the speed based on uh, the light sensor on the Circuit Playground Express. But since I did want to uh, use the light sensor for this uh, version today, what I did was I set up the light sensor in its own input block to run the motor for two seconds. So this way you can just hover your hand over it and run for a couple seconds, um, which I'll switch that out later, I think, as the throttle speed itself. So that code there is the code that I'm running on the Circle Playground Express. So in here, I would just click download. It'll save that file to my hard drive, and then I'll drag it onto the Circuit Playground Express. So I've already done that, that part, so we're um, able to see that in action when I plug this into power. So let me move some of this stuff out of the way for a second and find a battery box. Here we go. So I'm running this off of three alkalines. You can run off of three alkalines or four um, rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. Okay, so right now, if I press button A, we turn the motor, and if I press button B, we stop the motor. Now you see this is at running at one speed. If I switch the Circuit Playground Express's switch, now it's running faster, and I re-triggered this button A. So that's the, the what I say, 40% and 70% speeds, so and we could tune those. Uh, I also have, let's stop it, see if I can get the, the light sensor to work. So it should run for two seconds when I cover that. I say it should. Is that what I have running on here right now? Yeah, I saw it work before. Let's, let me restart it. There. There it goes. I might have to hit that with some brighter light for it to recover. All right, I'm still having problems with these light sensors. Okay, so, oh, there's the problem I'm having. I just tore the battery pack out of this thing. Uh, so we'll use a, a power supply on the bench top so I don't have to fix that later. So that's the basics of our uh, make code side of the project. And that takes us to the tools and techniques. And uh, sorry if I'm moving at a crazy clip today. Um, but I don't want to run out of time for, for the actual project build, and it's a little bit involved, not too bad. Uh, so let's head back over to the bench now, and we will take a look at some uh, a, a sort of another fundamental cardboard technique that I think is really uh, useful for this particular project. So I'm going to jump over here, and let's put the down shooter cam or the overhead cam on. Okay, so um, you can see here I've got these discs that I made to use for the cams. Now, what I want to be able to do is, like I said, turning this uh, motor or this wheel, but particularly turning this, this motor at um, the speed it goes, it's a, a really fast for an automaton. The automaton would be bouncing up and down really quick, and that's not what I want. I want a little gentler motion than that. Um, so... In order to slow that down, you have a few choices. You can reduce the throttle speed to the motor, but at a certain point, there's just not enough torque. These, are, uh, these little motors need to go pretty fast. So we aren't really going to probably get away with just dropping the voltage down so low or the current down so low. Um, so what we're going to do instead is a, uh, a gearing down of this motor's uh, diameter to a larger diameter, which in effect will uh, give us lower RPM and higher torque. Um, now, sometimes you'll see that done with gears, gear teeth uh, interlocking with each other. Sometimes you'll see that with uh, pulleys and belts. Um, and we're gonna explore that as well as a direct drive system today. But in order to do that, I need something thicker than this. So 
you have a couple of choices here. You could cut out a bunch of disks and layer them and get a nice big solid wheel. That might work really well for some things. Uh, I'm going to go with a, a slightly more expedient approach, and that is to essentially create a cylinder from a piece of cor corrugated cardboard. So let me clear some space here, and we'll switch uh, over to... Oh, let's see if my trackpad is working. Yeah, it is. Let me switch over to... Uh, that camera view here and that in the corner. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let's make a couple of circles first. So I think I'm going to go slightly smaller diameter. So I've got uh, these little mailer boxes are a good size. I've got a, a big enough piece to do uh, this wheel. Now the larger we make this, this wheel or drum, the slower and torquier our automaton is going to be. So I don't want to get it too small. I think I'm going to make it just slightly smaller. So what I'm going to do is you can, you can use a pie plate or a coffee can or something for this if you don't have a compass. I'm going to use a compass, uh, let's say, about that size. So I'm going to draw a, come on, this is a light one. Uh, draw a circle out here. And we'll cut that out. I'll have to do two of these, so bear with me. Let me get, uh, I can zoom in for you so you can see that. You can see that faint line there, hopefully. Um, and uh, I, I say this a lot, but something I find pretty helpful when you're cutting this kind of stuff is to try to keep moving the work so that your cuts are comfortable rather than dragging down and towards yourself. I'm, kind of dragging to the side in a way, and just do a series of cuts. I'm not cutting the best circle of my life here, but it should end up being okay. Uh, one of the, actually two of the techniques that, that we can use with uh, driving the uh, automaton shaft will be somewhat forgiving of lumpy geometry. So you can see my circle's not so great there. Uh, now we might get away with cutting our second layer here just by following the first one, which will give us a very similarly lopsided circle. So I would take a little more care with this maybe when you're doing your own, because uh, that's a pretty crummy circle. But we'll see if we can recover from those lumps. One way is to offset the flat parts from each other. And the second part is how we're gonna make uh, the sort of tread of this, uh, which is to take a, take a box like this and you can see, even though it's a small box, oh, I'll zoom out a little for you. It's a smallish box, but it has, uh, for this section, essentially one continuous piece that we can use. Uh, so what I'll do is get a straight edge, and I'm going to cut off the flaps. And once we do that, we'll be able to open up this middle section and use it as one long strip to wrap around the uh, discs. And corrugated cardboard being what it is, we can get a pretty nice bend out of it. And actually, I didn't check this, but oh good. <laughs> Corrugation runs the direction we want, so I should, I should mention if you are trying to bend that, we're going to end up bending it like this. We want the corrugation flutes running uh, with this bend grain in mind. Take another slice out of that. Okay, and now you can uh, determine the amount of uh, cardboard you need here by 
essentially rolling the circumference of the disc. Uh, so if you look, I've got like a little mark here. Uh, I can hold this up to the camera. If I roll that wheel, you can see I'm going to run out of cardboard before I get there, but I've got the other side of this. So what I'm going to do is I'll cut it away where uh, the overlap and glue, or I can even peel it apart here, I think. And I'll trim off those ends. And now I have a nice long piece of cardboard uh, that I can use for, uh, let's take off a little section here, for use for my tread. Uh, show of hands, how many people are tuned in just to see if I cut a finger off since we're doing so much uh, cardboard cutting here? Hopefully no one, you sickos. Uh, please don't cut off any digits, oh wow. You cut a large, I'd cut a layer of mat, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, NIST brings up cams. If you, if you get complex arrangements and shapes of cams, they are almost like a, a, a straight ahead computer program for the motion of things. Uh, if you look into the robots uh, that Leonardo da Vinci built, there was a little clockwork robot that used a really complex series of cams to drive around. And it was programmed with these cams almost like uh, a turtle bot. Okay, so uh, now what I'll do is I'm going to just figure out the length I need, and we can make it a little long. Don't make it short, but we'll make it a little longer than we know. Oh, I didn't make a good mark. Let's, I was relying on one of the flex there. All right, I'm going to put a pencil mark down, uh, and I'll zoom out a little bit more. So I've got a pencil mark here, and now I can roll that and make another mark here, and leave it a little long so that I can um, shave off the excess when I get this bent. Okay. Good. By the way, I found this is a, I don't know if I mentioned this before, this is like a little utility uh, contractor's blade fold. It takes a number two contractor's blade and it's a, but it's like a folding pocket knife type of, type of thing. I don't normally carry this, but I've been doing so many cardboard projects lately that I've, that I've enjoyed having this. I got it from a neighbor in a box of tools he was getting rid of, which is nice. Uh, okay, so now what I want to do is roll this uh, up around the wheel. Um, and I'm, you see me looking around. What I want to find is like a little paint can or something I can roll it on as a form. Um, here's a so this is a little tighter than, as you can see, what I'm going to end up with. Uh, it's just a little sample of paint. Hopefully it doesn't open up on us. Uh, an empty can would be better. Uh, we'll go with this. Now you may just get away with rolling it up uh, like this. That's what we're going to try first. If that's too lumpy for you, another option you have is what I did here on this little one. I cut the flutes, uh, or the, the top face between the flutes so that I had a really flexible thing. Um, but I think this is more flex than we want uh, for what we're doing. We're gonna rely on some of the rigidity here uh, to help us out. But this is another way to get a really nice arc is to uh, go and score the face along the grain of the flutes. Uh, okay, so that's given us a, a nice starting point and now, oh look, did I miscalculate? Because that's too short. Was that the piece I wanted to keep or was it the other piece? No, how did I screw that up? I, I got a, I demand a recount, what did I do? Huh, that ought to fit just fine. I think it's, maybe I'm not conforming. Ah, yeah, I'm not conforming to my bad circles. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim these down a little bit, make them better circles, let's do that. Let's take that care, it's worth doing, so. I'll start with this guy, and I'm actually going to bring this down a little bit. So let's go to the worst offender of the diameter of that, and try again. I can zoom in here.
Ooh. This one's a, this compass is a little loose, which is dangerous because you don't end up with a circle if it changes. All right, let's do this one. Oh yeah, this one's pretty short on one side. I'm gonna recut that from a fresh box. Whoa. Let's get this right. Now, you can go in and trim that, like I said, with little arc-like cuts. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of camera view. Uh, you could also use scissors. I don't like to use scissors because they do dull a lot on cardboard, but sometimes that's a really good way to get a curve. Uh, you can also use a finer knife if you use a hobby knife or an X-Acto. That's a good way to get curves. There's also flexible blades. If you use scalpels, they're, they can be a little difficult to use, but on curves, if you've got a steady hand, you can get a really nice curve. Okay. Almost. There we go. That's a better circle this time. Uh, now that it's smaller, it should work better for my You can see there it's a, got a little overlap now, which we'll take care of. So let's cut out the second one like the first. Uh, I also, by the way, tried, you can, if you don't want to cut uh, two of these, I was successful in making a pretty good uh, drum using some spokes. I used a circle on one side and then I made a couple of strips. I reinforced a couple of strips of cardboard to essentially make spokes. Uh, they're not super rigid, but we don't need this to be terribly rigid. It depends on your needs. Sometimes angling this in a little bit helps too. Also, I find I make better uh, cuts when I do a couple of passes rather than trying to force the cut all the way through on every pass. Okay, these are more circular circles. That's a good thing. Okay, yeah, that'll do. All right, so now what we can do is I'll, uh, I'll glue these on and then trim one end. So um, you can start, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna keep the drum on the, or rather the disc on the inside here rather than the other way. So the exterior will be all this strip. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start with just a dot here and get that set where I want it. Get it straight. Gotta get that to cool. I think I'm out of uh, <laughs> out of my air canister. I need to hook up my compressor and use that to encourage these. Okay, so that's tacked on there now. Um, so now I'm going to run a bead along here, and a little overlap or slop isn't going to hurt anyone. So. And so here what I'm doing, 
I'll mess this up, but I'm gonna lift it to the camera. Here what I'm doing is I'm doing like a little arc segment of of this and holding it in place to let it cool. You might be able to do the whole thing at once and then clamp it with some rubber bands or something like that, but I've I've just done a couple of these now. I'm no expert, but I've done a couple of these now and I've this is how I've done it. It's just let that cool. And now you can see that's already looking pretty good. Do another section. Try to keep that pretty straight. We uh, don't want a wobbly drum here. All right, a little more there. You could do this with uh, white glue, but you definitely would need to find a way to clamp it so you don't get tired of holding it for 15 or 20 minutes in place. The hot melt glue is nice just because of how quickly it finishes. So before I close this whole thing, I'm going to try to glue and slip in the second um, disc. So that might peel apart a little bit right there, but I think that's okay. Um, that's not the disc this is. So I want to fit that in there, so I'm going to go ahead and find it a little difficult to run the bead of glue along the edge of the wheel there, so I'm going to run it on the inside uh, of the tread piece. Whoop. If you work quickly, you can get that whole bead of glue down before it cools too much. Oh, my hot glue is running out. There we go. And now we'll fit this into here. straighten this, get lots of glue on my hands in the process. You can see why Halloween people use this stuff uh, to make cobwebs. There's like little modifications where you put fans in, uh, in the nozzle or near the nozzle and spray little webs everywhere. Right, that looks pretty good. So now I can finish, uh, I could go and maybe snip that off before I finish it. So let's uh, make a little mark right, oh, sorry, let me zoom that in. You can see I've got that overlap there, so I'm gonna make a little mark right about there, and there. Let's transfer those to the inside. See them. Is it that crooked? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to fix that about there instead. My uh, slightly imperfect disc is causing this to want to get a little tighter on one side, so I won't allow that. I'm going to cut a straight line down. Again, you can trim more, but you can't add it back in that easily. So I will, all right, I will gradually reduce this until it's just right. Oh, look, I've got a gap, darn it. Okay, that's actually not gonna impact us too much. Uh, fix that, I could maybe trim this out. This is just a little big. I'm gonna use scissors for this. I can see where it didn't follow my line. Oh, 
This is the beauty of cardboard. Most mistakes are fairly easily recover, recoverable. All right, we're gonna live with that gap, I think. So follow what I say, not what I do. That should have been better. Uh, whoop, maybe we'll glue something in place there. All right, so now we'll finish that there. Maybe this is a feature somehow. We can throw objects in there to rattle around later. Um, for what we're doing, having a gap actually is not as annoying as having a uh, overlap. So avoid the cardboard overlapping to the next side because then you get like a, a little bump in the motion. And you can imagine if you needed something very sturdy, you could uh, reinforce the center with it. You could put a spool through the middle. You could do multiple uh, layers of uh, cardboard wrapped around the outside. And I think I'll leave it be. Uh, I'm going to have to live with that. We could try to shim like some cardboard in there just for looks, but I don't think it's that important for what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to let that uh, continue to cool there uh, as we take a look at our cam uh, assembly. So let me pop back to this camera for a second. Um, and here is what we're going to build. So we've got this drum that we've made, and that's going to have a drive shaft running through it. Um, so that's going to be turned in one direction only, actually, because uh, of the shape of my cam. That's going to be turned by our wheel, uh, and I, I'll show you the pulley method, and I'll show you the direct drive method, and a, and a kind of trick with that that's important. Um, and then the rest of what we've got going on here, you might have seen this uh, on Show and Tell last night, or I've posted a couple things on, on the Adafruit social media. Uh, what we have is a what's called a cam follower. So this shaft that can move up and down, that's what our uh, automata, robot, character, bird that can flap its wings, whatever it is that you're gonna uh, want to move up and down. And it can be one piece of many in a mechanism, like let's say you've got a character playing the piano and you have a couple of arms that move up and down at different rates by having two different followers on top of two different cams. Um, this is just really a starting point that you can go really wild with making some amazing stuff. Um, and I'm going to do a guide on this and I'll put some links in there to the work of some automata builders that are amazing as well as some tips on, on doing them from those uh, very experienced builders, uh, including Doug North, a friend of mine who's a really tremendous builder of automata. So what we have here on this is the shaft rotating with a cam on it and then the cam follower end you can see that piece going up and down. Sorry, everything's cardboard colored. <laughs> um, we'll do a close up of that in a second. Causes that cam follower to rise up and then it follows the shape of the cam where it's flat and a, and a single uh, diameter. Then it rises up sharply and drops again. So that's the motion we'll get out of a cam like this, which is sort of like an egg shape or a comma uh, type of shape. Um, the parts of this that matter is we have a drive shaft that is cranked or rotated with a cam on it running through this transverse direction. I've got a rubber band on here to act as a stop to prevent this from moving in and out. Um, we can put one on the inside of this as well. Then I have um, the cam mounted to that shaft securely. And then the other direction we have uh, a couple of bearings here. So I've got straws, drinking straws, little clipped off drinking straws running through a couple of holes so that this shaft uh, here, the cam follower, can only move up and down. It doesn't want to move left and right or forward and back. Um, so that is one part of guiding it. And the other is this pair of guides back here. I have a couple of pieces of cardboard uh, that the cam follower is channeled into so that it doesn't rotate. Uh, and you can do automata where things rotate. That's a uh, valid and interesting way to do things too with a disc uh, as the cam that will spin it. Um, but this one, I just wanted it to move up and down. So let's uh, switch over here for a close up here of how this works. 
And I'll put that right about, oops, there. And we can zoom in on this part of the mechanism. So hold that kind of still for you. There we go. Uh, so as this Now, I don't have gravity helping this come back down, and there's no spring, so I'll have to push that back down with my hand. But you can see that motion of the cam lifting up the cam follower, and then the cam follower will follow that back down. So here you can see these are the, sh the two guides uh, that keep this cam follower from twisting um, and also help it to not rotate sort of left and right and fall off of the the cam, because we want to be lifted by that cam. You also see there's a few points of friction here where I've used some sort of that slick packing tape, uh, that, that waxy coated um, brown packing tape is what I'm using. Here you could use scotch tape. Uh, it's not too bad. You, you can use the raw cardboard, but I was trying to reduce some of the, I could hear the friction of that cardboard on cardboard. Um, so I've put some pieces there and there's my little um, cam follower. So let's pull this apart a bit. I'm gonna zoom out. You can see how this is made. So I've got the cam follower here is just a big rectangle and it's made by stacking, I think, four layers I put of corrugated cardboard and just tacking them with uh, some hot glue. And I put a little hole in it to put my shaft uh, for the cam follower through. So this, you can see, it's as simple as that. Now, the section that it's going through has these two straws running through the middle of holes and I actually put a little hot glue on that to keep it in place but again these holes here those cause a decent amount of friction um, so the bearings you can hear that the bearings uh, uh, these little bearing sleeves of the plastic straw help things out uh, a nice amount I'm going to tack that back in with hot glue um, and Another one down here, running out the bottom, you can see it there. This is just a little box I had. This is a McMaster car box, actually. Uh, a car, McMaster car box. That was hard to say. Um, and what I did was I just folded down the uh, lids from the top and bottom, the four lids, into triangles. I kind of bent them and formed into fri triangles and hot glued them in place so that we have a very sturdy frame. Uh, again, you don't need a super sturdy frame for this because it's not a heavy mechanism. Um, but it, uh, yeah, how many people in the chat recognized a McMaster car box? I don't know if there's any identifying marks on it. It's pretty generic. Uh, and then you can see here if I, uh, so I've, I've tacked a little bit of hot glue on my cam here, but I'm going to take that apart now. So I'm going to remove this stop here. And then you can see with the cam not between these guides, I can pull it out this far, but then it's going to hit that uh, hole in the side of the box there. So I will kind of break this out of its little dot of hot glue and now it'll slide off. And that hot glue is going to encounter this side of the box too. So I'm going to pull it out a little, a little force. And so here you can see there's my cam with a little bit of uh, tape on it. And that gives it that sort of Quick rise, but gentle rise, hold at the top, and then sudden drop. And that was the, the motion I get out of that shape of a cam. Uh, and then here you can see this was the, the previous drum I had done where I said I, I created these spokes uh, somewhat so you could just sort of see inside, which is a little bit interesting. Um, when I uh, attached this cardboard to this disc, I made these little um, supports, which I don't think was necessary. It's a little bit overkill. You can see this one I just made is not going anywhere. The hot glue's strong enough. That one's in pretty good shape. Uh, I can see here this is peeling up a little bit because I didn't hold it while it was cooling. So I'm going to do like this. Just because any irregularity in that cylinder is going to be um, a little bit of an issue for the motor that's trying to drive it. But again, I'll show you how we'll make that be pretty forgiving uh, with our sort of suspended direct drive system. I don't know what to call the thing, but that's what I'll call it. Uh, so let's cool that off a little. All right, I'll hold that while I talk. So uh, 
there you can see just putting a hole through these two sides. And the main tool I used for these was a, an awl. Um, by poking this awl through, you don't want these to be a tight fit uh, for these, so just pick something that's a little bit bigger. The taper is nice. You could use a Phillips screwdriver probably to drive that through. And now these will spin nicely. Um, so let's take a look. So what we'll do now is we'll add the uh, shaft to this one, just to switch over to this one since we made this one. And then I'll show you how to drive it as a belt and pulley system and how that gears things down as well as our direct drive system. Put that to the side, uh, and since I already have little uh, starter holes here, I'm just going to widen those a bit. It's good if this is a nice, uh, where's, my, where's the stick I want to use to grab a new stick? And these are just these little dowels I got at the craft store. You could use pencils for this, uh, it, it would be shorter. Um, you could probably use bamboo skewers, although they're a little, little thin. Um, so I want this to be a snug fit because this drum is what's driving, or this wheel is what's driving this shaft. So they need to be uh, fixed to each other. So that means don't go crazy digging that hole. It's good to have a somewhat snug fit, and then we're going to use uh, glue to fix it in place. And here we're just doing that time-honored search around until you see the end of the thing. I don't see the end of it. Where are you? Oh, I see you. That could be flush with this. It could come out a little bit. It could protrude a lot. It actually doesn't matter too much. Um, so it's fairly, fairly straight, fairly even, given the creation method. You can see a little wobble there. Um, and I'm not going to sweat it because I don't think it's going to make a big difference. So let's glue this in place. And now obviously these techniques you can apply to much greater precision work if you like. Um, you can, it's typical to, to carve these types of automata using wood. Uh, you can build them with Legos, you can build them with uh, erector sets. There's a lot of ways to build these types of things, but the cardboard one definitely gets the principles uh, across even if it's not as precise as some of those other materials. So I'm going to let that cool, um, and what we can do actually will, without worrying about the uh, cam and follower, what we'll do is we'll run that through our frame here. Uh, I'm going to switch cameras now to make this one the big view. We can run that through our frame, and I'll show you how we can use a pulley to drive that. So I'm going to just put this through. little box here. So that's the motion we want to get. We want to spin that. Um, and I'm going to plug in the Cricut board. So what I have right now is it running either at the th what 40% or 70% speed uh, when I hit one of the buttons. So I can just hit a button and let it roll. Um, and then I'll try to have a steady enough hand to run this as a pulley, which does require a little bit of uh, precision, but using a belt and pulley drive gives you a pretty forgiving um, of the geometry. Let's see, is this going to be possible? Let me move some things. Can you see that if I go over here with this? Uh, and, you know, it'll probably start yanking the thing around and, and wobble off just because nothing is, nothing is secure here right now. Um, I may just clamp, I'm going to clamp the wheel into a vise just to make it a little less insane. So, let's see. I'm going to rotate, I think, that way. So, when you use um, a pulley, the direction of the rotation of your driving wheel uh, is the same as the direction of the driven wheel. Uh, opposite is true when we use this as a direct drive. So I want 
if I want this uh, drum to rotate in this direction, so is my driving wheel. So. Uh, oh, and you know what? Should I switch to that one? Yeah, so, whoops. <laughs> I have, uh, just like last week in the uh, tightrope project, I have one of these little pulleys that's actually designed for this that I'm gonna switch out. Uh, let me just switch out the motors, actually, so that the um, string belt that I'm using, it doesn't have any elasticity to it, so it's a little, a little happier if it runs through that channel on the pulley. So I'm going to just unscrew... <laughs> Let me turn that off. It tr got triggered by the light sensor. So I'm going to unscrew that, and I've got ground in the first one. Okay, so we'll match that. And, you know, you could run two TT motors at the same time if you had two different drive shafts you wanted to drive. But a lot of the cool challenge with automata is having a single drive source, often a crank if it's a hand-cranked one, or a clockwork motor uh, that will run everything. So that's part of the art form there. Uh, so let's see, is this going to run in what direction? That way, good. Stop that. And I'm just going to crank this down in my vise. I want to crush it. And now I'm going to align. Uh, you want to align the, if you look at a top view, you want to align the wheels same orientation as each other so they rotate around the same axis. Uh, and I'll put this pulley roughly in the middle of that wheel. Now I will take an overly long piece of string. <laughs> Let's see if we can take up the slack by moving this over here. There's no reason this has to be long. It's just how I tied the string. It'll work the same regardless of length. Okay, I think I have one little knot in this string that might impede things, so I'm going to lift that up. Okay, uh... Why not give it a whirl? What could go wrong? Here we go. So I don't know if you can see it too well on here. Um, I'll tape a little piece of um, cardboard to it. Or how about some blue tape? That'll be visible. Uh, just so you can see the rate at which things are going. So here's... I didn't do the math of this, but you can calculate the um, ratio of your gearing, uh, if you just know the diameters of these two rings. So if you can see that, I think you can see that. So here you can see we're getting turn, 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 turn. Here we have turn. Whoops, <laughs> I pulled it off. This is very scientific, my explanation. Here we go. Turn, 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 versus turn, 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 turn. So that's my scientific definition of the, the gearing down that we're getting. So this is one way you can do this. Um, and it's, uh, like I said, it's forgiving of the fact that this isn't a perfect um, wheel over here that we're driving. Now, a method that my friend Doug North uh, mentioned to me for a different project that I was doing, he said, you might want to try a direct drive system, which basically brings the motor back uh, into the same sort of physical space as the automata, but automaton, but the um, without needing gears, we use essentially a little bit of friction and pressure between the driving wheel, which is why it's nice to have this big rubber tire on here, and the driven one. Um, the issue with this, however, is that if we have these, uh, if you've ever done anything with gears, you'll know that they don't want to be misaligned or they'll, they'll fall out of uh, or strip, uh, fall out of place with each other or strip. So what I came up with for this is if I use, uh, again, the system doesn't have a ton of torque in it, so it's, a, it's fairly forgiving of using gravity. Uh, so if I set this wheel 
with a little axle that will drive into the side of the box. If I set this so it rests on here, the weight of this should be enough, or has been in, in the tests that I've done, uh, to turn this, but since this like a kind of like an idler arm, or if there's a better term for that, let me know in the chat, um, this wheel can essentially ride with the irregularities of the surface, uh, and, and it's sort of a, a mutually beneficial system. This will turn that guy, and that guy could drive this, is, this guy's translation a little bit. Um, so what I'll do is, uh, let me re, whoops, turn off you. Let me reconnect this motor. Uh, you can just pull off these wheels and pulley wheels, but I used the little screw uh, on this one. There's a little screw in the middle of the pulley, so it's, so it's more stable on there. Uh, this has a big enough, uh, the, this presses on deeply enough that it doesn't really require that. Uh, oh, I think it was black to the right on this, otherwise we'll have to switch the direction, either in software or physically. So, now another fun thing you can do, I think on our example today, what I'll do is I'll just show, we're almost out of time, I'll just show, uh, we can move the um, follower arm and then pin a character onto it, like our Ada bot. Uh, but another fun thing to do is to add additional mechanisms or linkages, a really nice one that you see a lot in this type of automaton is uh, flapping wings of a bird. So if you have pivots at the shoulders and fix the arms out in space and then move the follower up and down, you get this kind of a, a bird flap motion, which is pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's do this from this view first, and then I'll go to an overhead, see if you can see that. Uh, so I'll turn on our motor. Oh, he's rubbing against the side. I pushed that a little too far in. Let's pull that out. And so you can see we get a uh, gearing down. It's actually a little, this is a bigger, uh, this orange wheel is a little bigger than that pulley wheel, so this is moving faster. Um, but if I am holding this loosely so that this wheel can bounce around on my slightly deformed cylinder, it, it's pretty, uh, it works pretty well. If I hold this rigidly, what we'll find is that the whole system wants to bounce around and move and it gets a little noisy. Uh, not terrible, but so here's how, uh, oh, let's go to this camera. You can see this from the top here. Okay, and let's, uh, you know what I'll do? Let me stop this. Let's put our follower back in. Turn that off. Uh, so that we actually get the motion we're looking for. So I'll take that off of there, run through my little straw bearings. And now we'll pull this out and put the cam on. Uh, what direction am I rotating? I gotta refigure that so I know which way to flip the cam on. Uh, how about we'll do it like this. Okay, so if that's gonna rotate in that direction, I want the cam this way. Whoop. Oh, that's <laughs> my light sensor again. So, here's my cam. And now I will replace that, and I'm gonna put a rubber band stop on one end here, and I'll glue a little bit of hot glue on our cam once we like the positioning of this. You can, if you find this is sliding a lot left and right, you can put other rubber bands in place that work really well. So all I'll do there is take a rubber band, fold it up a couple times, and just slip it over the end. Oh, that needs to be tighter. And then just push it up a little bit so now it can't fall out that way. Okay, so the that's about right there. We'll put a little 
Uh, so we're going to be running that way. Yeah. And you can see it's slipping right now. The, the friction uh, isn't great enough between the cam and the shaft. So just the cam shaft will turn, but the cam doesn't. So we're going to hot glue that in place. And just one little dot of it is enough. So we'll let that sit. Cool. Okay, so now what we want is um, the wheel. I'm going to reconfirm my, my rotation direction again. So let me set this here so you can see just like that. By the way, I haven't checked the chat in a little while, so I'm terrified that something has gone wrong technically. No. All right. Uh, so if we, okay, so if you can see that, uh, we're going to be rotating in this direction. My glue is not cool yet. So we're going to go that direction. This wheel needs to go in the opposite direction, so forward. So that's good. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm just going to take a toothpick. I did this with a paper clip earlier, but we'll see if a toothpick works. Uh, and I'm going to remove the... Let me zoom in for you. Get double vision, sorry. I'm going to remove the wheel for a moment. Uh, and you can see here we've got these two little mounting holes to put long screws through. So I'm just going to break off uh, this toothpick or even just bend it and uh, I could put a little dab of glue in there or sh maybe shove the broken off tip in there. But I just want to allow this to, yeah, it'll work pretty well I think, allow this to pivot around the toothpick and it'll be jammed into the box with the wheel uh, riding on top. So let's make sure this doesn't run into the wheel. I don't think it will. It didn't earlier. Yeah, it clears it. Okay, so this toothpick will be sitting in the box so it can maybe like that, so it can ride. Uh, so let me zoom out. And I'll show you this cockamamie plan, which is, I've got a little hole already in the box from paperclip. Let's see if that works. It might be too far away because of our new uh, smaller diameter wheel. So I'm going to drive a little hole right here, and I can just use a uh, safety pin, my old shop favorite. Something like there. And again, you could take these methods and use much uh, more precise building methods if you like, but it will work pretty well uh, to prototype quickly and learn about these systems using cardboard, toothpicks, glue, and the like. Oh, so that's, there we go. That was being um, pulled back by the wire here. So let's, let's see, how about we'll set the cricket there. And I'll switch cameras so you can see from the front again. I know we're a little over on time, but we're just about finished. So now what I'll do is run it. And you can see I get a little slightly bouncy uh, TT motor here, but it turns the wheel very nicely. And look at that great motion we get on the shaft here. Now what I had done earlier is I had attached uh, just a little piece of cardboard to, uh, I ran a hole through it, put it on this dowel so that the up and down motion uh, we could attach something to the front of that. So let me stop the, the motor for a second. I had put it inside the middle here, but let's put it on the very top just so I don't have to pull that shaft back out. So this will now, let's get that cricket to stay put. I'm going to pull you 
pull your power for a second. When this doesn't work in a second, tell me it's because I pulled the power. Uh, and so what I have here is just a, um, a little AdaBot that we can tape on there. Uh, and like I say, you could try to do other limbs attached to things so we get some motion. This is just a very simple version. So remembering to plug power back in. Here we go. With our Adabot Automata. So I hope this is a good launching off point for you if you're interested in building this type of automata. Like I said, you could have multiple followers and multiple cams so that you have a rippling motion. You could uh, change the shapes of the cams to get different types of motion. You can see here my character jumps and lands and holds, jumps and lands and holds, jumps and lands and holds. So that motion instead of just a constant sign up and down is all based on the shape of that cam. So try experimenting with different cam shapes. And uh, in the guide that I'm gonna do, I will put some links to uh, other articles about the cam shapes, particularly used in Automata. Um, but this has been a lot of fun to build. I've actually never built one from scratch before. I've played around with some wooden kits before, but I was uh, really excited to do uh, what is a very satisfying uh, uh, sort of fundamental type of project for uh, mechanisms and automata. And uh, since we can drive it with the Cricut using Circuit Playground Express and then program that either in Make Code or Circuit Python, uh, you can do a lot, which I'm going to experiment with using uh, the light sensor. And remember, I have my little switch here so that I can change speeds. Here's our slow version. So that might be fun to play around with. And uh, I think this would be a great project for uh, working with kids and students who are interested uh, in programming as well as mechanisms or entertainment type of projects. Oh, what have I done? I've stalled the motor out, sorry. Uh, so that is the Cardboard Automata. Uh, I'm John Park for Adafruit Industries and I thank you for tuning in. I'm going to go hang out for a few minutes on the Discord chat uh, and let me stop this now. Uh, let, me, let me move over there. Hey, stop you. Let's um, not forget to check out that coupon code that I mentioned earlier, which is, oh, has my computer stopped responding? Hey, that's weird. Oh, I think I've crashed Wirecast. <laughs> Wirecast is no longer listening. I wonder if this, uh, let me see if my button box got stuck. Am I imagining things? Huh. Sometimes this happens when trackpads are being squished by some kind of force. Let's see. Well, the... everything's falling apart here. My microphone just came flying off. Uh, if I can't click to it, the coupon code is automaton. Uh, I'm glad you can see and hear me. I just can't seem to switch the... Ah, it worked now. Yeah, it just got kind of stuck. Uh, so here's our coupon code, Automaton, and uh, go check that out. Sai asks, what are some things that I could build using a camshaft mechanism? Um, so I will put some links up uh, to some of the projects, the Automata projects that I've seen. Um, but I've seen everything from dancing characters to, oh, there goes a plane, to Automata that have characters that are playing the drums and hitting different rhythms with different limbs by having different shapes and uh, diameters of cams. So um, what other suggestions do people have in the chat for things that you could build with a camshaft mechanism? Um, they are sort of fundamental to the way uh, pistons drive the rotor on a car. Um, there's offset, offset cranks on pistons that drive up and down. Um, and the, the cams are used for timing the, the piston firing. Um, what else? Gosh, that's what I'm thinking of now, but it'd be an interesting thing in the chat. That's over in the Discord chat. Um, <laughs> Andy Calloway, crash, bang, clatter. Yeah, that was my mic getting grabbed. Cardboard pick and place machine. There you go. That's, that's the uh, ultimate resolution to this whole thing is we're going to build a cardboard pick and place. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all again so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to go to this place, the uh, Discord, to hang out a little bit. And uh, 
Look forward to the learn guide in uh, the next few days, probably beginning of next week. I'll have that out if you are interested in building your own cardboard automata with a cam and follower mechanism. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.